I've always been the type of person when someone tells me you can't do that, I want to prove people wrong. She was very independent and wanted to do everything herself. Lauren was plucked from obscurity and thrust into the limelight. Back up, back up. This is where it all happened. Laguna Beach, California. I don't know that that was what I thought I was signing up for. She really is the character you're rooting for. She became the star. Her biggest challenge was being taken seriously. I'm very nervous right now. Hopefully everything will go smoothly. She represents this millennial generation. Lauren's done a great job at using her celebrity to spotlight things that are important. To her, it's not about writing a check because anyone can give money. Anytime you can take something you love and do something good with it, it's amazing. A pop innovator is someone who does something differently. They kind of stray from the norm and they do things their way. Family is so important. You want them to always be there for you and their support and them to encourage you to do all the things you want to do. I really liked growing up in Laguna Beach. I had a lot of really good friends there. It's a really artsy town. Lauren was directly influenced by everything there. She's a beach girl at heart. The history of Laguna is it was an artist community, and if you just go to Laguna, you can see sort of how that would inspire art and fashion. We call it the bubble. We have beautiful beaches, you know, the weather is great, and it's a very small town, so it's a very close-knit community. Growing up in the Conrad family meant you were always going to be surrounded by people you loved. There was going to be support. A kitten! I have a sister and a brother. I'm the oldest. Lauren, show, come here, show it to the camera. That's good, that's good. I always looked up to her and stole her clothes, and she always had the best clothes. We're six years apart, so I was kind of the annoying little brother to her. Very nice painting. I was very much a daddy's girl, but in like a tomboy kind of way. We were really close. I was really into fishing, and she would go with me. I'd take her out on the boat, so we did that together. My father is an architect, so I would always be on construction sites with him. When you have a parent who's more creative and works in design, I think that they're excited when their kids take interest in that. I got more of the discipline end and the boring stuff, but I did like taking her shopping. She was a kick to go shopping with because she insisted on dressing herself. She would put together some crazy outfits, but I encouraged it. I could see how much fun she had picking out her own clothes. Hi, Lauren. Hi. Nice necklace. Of course it's on. I think my mother did a really good job of balancing with me being my mom and my friend. She was pretty strict raising me. But at the same time, she was never a judgmental or hard mother. She was very good about having that balance. I think the best thing that her parents did for her was not give her anything easy. She's always had chores. She always worked. We encouraged her to do things on her own, and pretty soon she wanted to do everything on her own. It made her learn from a very early stage in her life that to get somewhere in this world, you had to earn it. You had to work for it, and she's done that. ever necessarily an aha moment for me as far as fashion is what I want to do. It's just kind of always what I wanted to do. I remember growing up and all of my friends were set on a course. You know, you, you go to school, you get very good grades, you go to a very good college, and you know, their parents were always putting pressure on them. But I wasn't as interested in, in academics that way. And where are you going, Lauren? School. School. She struggled in school, not because she couldn't do the work, but because she wasn't interested, she wasn't really putting in the time. And so when she went and took some painting classes, she was top of the class. For Lauren, it was like an epiphany, and she realized that, okay, I'm not stupid, I just was trying to do the wrong thing. When I was about eight years old, I was given a very tiny sewing machine as a gift. It was little and battery powered, and I used to use it to make clothes for my Barbies. 
I definitely remember her making some Barbie clothes with her sewing machine, and of course they never fit properly, but <laughs> they're definitely her own style. It was so much fun to create something and have it be a one-of-a-kind thing that none of my other friends had. Lauren spent hours dressing and fixing up her Barbies, and then it moved on to shopping. A lot of kids are bored with shopping, but she seemed interested in the clothes. And then come junior high, she started doing a lot of sketching of models and outfits and stuff. Lauren's always talked about fashion since the day I've met her, and she used to make shirts for us the first day of school every year, custom shirts for the group of friends, and it's always been in her life. It was really clear to us that she just was not going to be a straight-A student. And her counselor was actually really helpful, and she was the one that kind of sat us down and said, Lauren's not going to go to, like, a top university. Jim and I were never thinking she was going to go to college. We always knew she would go into something on the artistic side of things. Instead of my parents putting a lot of pressure on me to do better, my dad said, OK, if you're not interested in these sort of subjects, we're going to focus on what you really like. It became very clear that her passion was really fashion, and so we helped her to go that direction. I just decided that I was going to be a fashion designer, and I don't even think I understood what that meant back then. I kind of made up my mind and did it. <laughs> It's definitely a lot of pressure to put on a younger person who's still kind of figuring out who they are. I think anytime someone takes an interest in you or your friends or just, you know, your lifestyle, especially as a teenager when you're like so unsure of yourself, you're like, oh cool, like let's do this, this sounds so fun. One thing that made the experience of being on television a little bit easier is that I got to do it with my group of best friends. We all went through this together. Laguna Beach came about because I had an idea inspired by growing up in a beach town, and I pitched it to my bosses at MTV as 90210 meets Dawson's Creek meets Heather's, and they immediately saw something. The show followed this group of kids all the way through graduation and into summer and captured some of the little dramas that life bestows upon a lot of high school kids. MTV said, oh, well, are you really going to be able to find seven beautiful, talented, funny, charming kids in Southern California? And I said, have you been to Southern California? I remember the first time that I heard that producers were coming to our high school. It was such an exciting thing happening that it was all anybody talked about. I don't think any of us knew what it even meant. <laughs> we literally had street teams all over Southern California. We went to Laguna Beach High School and we set up a little table and the kids that wanted to show up showed up and Lauren was one of them. She had a soccer game that day and her coach told her if she didn't go to the soccer game, she was off the team. I can't help but think, what if she had made the other decision and gone to the game? Steven has been my best friend since forever came over one night and just randomly kissed me. I saw Lauren's tape. She was so articulate about high school, and she basically said to us, I'm in love with a boy I can't have. He keeps screwing me over, but he's one of the people I can just connect with. That was jaw-dropping for a 17-year-old to be that self-aware, and obviously a compelling entry point in, in terms of story but she was just so matter-of-fact about it and so poised. So we found Lauren and we found the cast. We shot for two or three days and we only had six or seven scenes and none of them really were connected. We were not telling a full story, so we needed a storytelling device. And I said, what if Lauren narrated? This is where it all happened. Laguna Beach, California, a small town in the OC where I grew up. Oh, and me? I'm Lauren. My friends call me LC. There was something about LC that immediately drew you to her, and I think there was that sort of undescribable charm about her. I've always been the nice girl, but this year, I realized sometimes you just have to go after what you want. She really is the character you're rooting for and that you want to win in the end, so she became a star. 
it was stressful at times. It's definitely a lot of pressure to put on a younger person who's still kind of figuring out who they are and who's making all their mistakes. Especially when you're going through something and you're like, I look so stupid right now. And there's like three cameras on you and you're like, and everyone's gonna know. When are you gonna go to Newport and find boys? Soon, hopefully. There's none here. We've used them all up. We thought, what could they possibly get from our lives that would be worth watching? We didn't think the show was gonna be a success. I remember they ran the first promo during the VMAs. It was very surreal. Right after that, we started getting recognized when we were out in public. You know, you didn't really know how to react. Hey, that was so nice, man. We'd be going out to dinner as a family, and people would always stop her and ask her for pictures and whatnot. So it was pretty immediate reaction to the show's airing. Watching your daughter and knowing that really people all over the world were watching it, it was a strange experience. You get almost like an inside look at your child's life, which was kind of fun. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of parents would like. I just don't have very good luck dating. <laughs> I have bad judgment. By the end of the first season, they had three million viewers tuning into the finale. It just became a real cultural touchstone really quickly. None of us really knew that it was going to be as big a thing that it was. We thought it might just be something they did for a season, and then they would just go on with their lives. You know, nobody else really got it or understood, just because it's not something you can understand until you've gone through it. It's a decade later, and I'm still not used to it, so I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> very bizarre to watch yourself on television. Everybody sees a situation a different way. Put 10 people in the same situation, they're all gonna tell you a different story. Laguna Beach was a sensation, and Lauren was such a central figure that the audience identified with that one of the show producers came to me and said, what if we did a show about Lauren pursuing fashion in LA, and we'll call it The Hills? And I said, it's genius. I was a college student, and I was like, yeah, this sounds like a good job. I think I initially said yes for the paycheck. <laughs> it was pretty quickly after The Hills started that I realized that this was going to be a different experience. The show was built around her as the star. And she was pursuing some internships, and Devil Wears Prada had just come out. So I said, we have to add that aspect if she's going to work in fashion. So it was sort of perfectly aligned that Teen Vogue came in. When she came in and met with us at Teen Vogue, we knew that her interest was legit. She wasn't there for the fame. Why Teen Vogue? Because, I mean, I love Vogue. I've read Vogue for years. That was all real, and her doing that interview, I mean, she was very nervous that day. Can you write? Can I? Yeah, you can. Working at Teen Vogue as an intern was a dream for many people. That's a coveted spot, to say the very least. Lisa really liked you and saw a lot of potential, and we'd like to offer you an internship. <gasps> oh, you had me nervous. <laughs> you had me nervous. Sure, she was a reality star, and we knew that. But we were bringing on someone who was interested in the fashion space and was a fan of Teen Vogue. She was a reality star second. If you want to work in fashion, there's no better way to learn. You're meeting every single person you need to meet to make this happen. Working at Teen Vogue was like being thrown into the deep end. It was rough. <laughs> there is a dress that needs to get to New York, and you need to get it there. You're going to be on a red eye tonight. Seriously? Yeah, go. I'll guard it with my life. I never had a situation where I asked Lauren to do something and she said no. There was no diva behavior or anything like that. When Lauren was at work, she was an intern, not a reality star. And she did duties just as any other intern would. But being on the cover of the magazine you're interning for is not normal. That was kind of a big deal. I don't think I was asked as an intern to be on the cover. I was asked as the star of a television show. Intern Lauren wasn't on the cover. Hills Lauren was. Anybody can be inside, but only one person can be on the cover. Beyond all that, it was a huge seller for Teen Vogue. One of the funny things about working at Teen Vogue is that even after being there for a year and being on the cover, they didn't care. You know, they blow up all the covers in the offices, so they're all up on the walls. And I remember my cover being up and like being so proud of it there, but they would walk by and be like, do these copies. And you were like, uh, uh, they didn't care. What role did you have in selecting the clothes? Oh, I didn't, I didn't select them. Okay. Team Vogue did. I just, I had no idea what I was doing, and I learned so much. It was an amazing introduction, and I'm so grateful that they even let me in there, to be honest. People come knocking on her door in the middle of the night. They had to have guards there 24 hours. Let her get into the car, please, guys.
have to learn from your mistakes, otherwise they're just mistakes. Kind of say, all right, well, I learned not to do that again. Next time I will do better. When I'm looking at a blank board, I have nothing done. I think it's intimidating and exciting at the same time because you can do whatever you want. There's so many possibilities. I'm showing my fall 2008 collection on the runway. The inspiration for the whole styling and line is Paris. So it's kind of a Parisian theme, a lot of bows, you know, netted headpieces, gloves, just very girly and French. While Lauren was on the hills, she started her own fashion line. Lauren's first line was really her entry point into the fashion world. She was dipping her toe into the water, and for somebody that young, it's pretty remarkable. You go in there, you're not going to fall under yeah. I remember the runway show was crazy. To be able to be doing your own show is pretty nuts. I'm very nervous right now, but um, hopefully everything will go smoothly, and you know I'm really happy with the way the collection turned out. She's been talking about this since fifth grade, and I remember thinking, she's done it. This is it. I was so proud of her. The smile on her face when she came out, she was so nervous and doing kind of an awkward wave. When the Lauren Conrad collection debuted, it wasn't a success. There were a lot of mixed reviews. I think Lauren was an easy target when her first line came out. It's very tough because she was a reality star, you know, so she already wasn't taken seriously. So I think people couldn't see past that. There's this young girl, she has a clothing line, she's famous. Nobody really knew that she really was a fashion designer and not a television personality. Yeah. I did get to do a line before I would have, but I think that anyone else given the same opportunity probably would have taken advantage of it, and I, I'm not going to try and defend myself for that. Being on a reality TV show, I think, makes you a little bit more tough-skinned. You've already been judged, you've already been exposed, and now you just kind of have a little bit more freedom to be yourself and to take the criticism or the praise. She got it. She understood it, but most people just didn't know the amount of hard work that she really put into it. It was definitely a starter line. I was still learning the whole process, how a line's produced. I was definitely very limited in that line as to what I could do. Every designer needs to start somewhere, and the best way to do it is just to dive in and start designing and selling a line. Sherry? Yeah? I think I'm going to do this one with the white. Okay. I'm not sure that that line was necessarily representative of what I was capable of. I think being a fashion designer, period, is a tough business. It doesn't matter if you're Elsie or anyone out there. You cannot think that the first thing out of the gate is going to be your success story, because that is one in a million. But I think it also helped her grow. It helped her see, is this really me? Is this a true reflection of who I am as a designer? And I think that was her turning point. I was able to take that experience and apply it to my lines now, which I wouldn't be able to do if I hadn't gone through it. You have to learn not to take your work home with you, but I think that that's so difficult when your work is a show about your personal life. Are you happy with the success of The Hills? It was really Lauren's show. She was making a boatload of money for the network, and she was the star, and she was really filming her life 24-7. Back up, back up, back up. The biggest change in my life was just losing my anonymity. I couldn't go wherever I wanted or do whatever I wanted anymore. Hey guys, could you please stop? I don't know that that was what I thought I was signing up for. You got it? God, there's a lot of you guys. Lauren has lost a lot of privacy. I think that's probably her biggest issue. She's a private person. She likes being surrounded by people that she knows. And when that is taken away, it's scary. Give us a space, let walk. It got to the point where we, at any given time, had at least a few cars parked outside our home. So you knew that if you walked out your front door, you had a caravan with you for the day. When we would go out, her being recognized was always a little nerve-wracking, and we were worried about her safety in L.A. People come knocking on her door in the middle of the night, so they had to have guards there 24 hours. Sorry, right, guys. Better get, get to the car, here. please, guys. I'm Better sorry. Get to the car. No problem. I decided to leave the hills because I could no longer do it and be happy. Do you think the hills were survive without you? She definitely was over the whole having your life on camera thing, and she needed to get on with her life. Things had just gotten so crazy, it was just time. <laughs> I mean, it was just time to move on. 
It's so hard to meet people that actually want to be your friend, especially dating. I think she was ready to find the right person, and living your life on camera is not the way to find the right person. Can we just get some pictures? I went through a lot during that time, and it wasn't fun, but I came out on the other end, and I definitely stronger for it. She never wanted to be famous, and actually still doesn't want to be famous. She really wants to be a fashion designer. Her priorities really were moving more towards how she would start to build her fashion business and create opportunities outside. I always thought that once I stopped filming and sort of just started living, it would be a big adjustment, and it really wasn't. I kept waiting to like feel weird or feel like I was missing something. It was almost like holding your breath for a really long time, and I finally just got to exhale. It was nice. <laughs> She always had to prove that she wasn't just this dumb little girl from Southern California that was on a TV show. You're off the show. You're done with the show. Yeah. It's good that you're moving on and yeah. that everybody else is still stuck there. <laughs> Are you? And you have your fashion line, too. Yeah, I, um, I have one coming into Kohl's in October, so I'm very excited. Anytime you can make someone feel more confident, even feel pretty, that's a good day. I think Lauren was very smart about how she parlayed the hills into her fashion and beauty empire. When Lauren started her line with Kohl's, that was a new chapter in her life. It was a big responsibility, and she took it very seriously. I'm very excited to be launching a collection with Kohl's because not only do I get to be a part of a great store, but I get to be in great company. When we first met her, it was very clear that she had a great sense of style, a great sense of herself. The inspiration for the Elsie Lauren Conrad collection was, it was me. It was everything I wanted to wear. When Lauren was younger, Kathy and I wanted to teach her to be able to budget herself. And so we gave her $500 for the whole year. She had to be very creative with what she bought. And I think that really influenced her to be more creative about how to approach fashion. Lauren's collection is geared toward a customer who is working at her first job or still in school maybe, who wants a great, clean, polished look that's consistent and pretty. The goal was to fill a void in the store. It was really to be the California brand, which is great because I love California and California style. I think that maybe some celebrities with clothing lines don't spend as much time actually designing the clothes, but Lauren made it really clear to her partners at Kohl's that she didn't want to just do an endorsement, she wanted to actually design the line. She personally hand selects every print on the line and she weighs in on every style because she really has a tremendous understanding of what works, what's her, what's not her, what her customers will like. It's like these two tops, the little printed Dixies. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. gonna trade it out for navy, I think. It's her spin on the detail, what turns her on when she sees a bow or a heart or a specific type of print or button. But she's very focused on those types of things and in fact those make the difference so we did the bow here and then we did the the bow down here on the sleeve but the detail is cute because you can put your little thumb through like that that's adorable the lc lauren conrad collection grew so quickly they initially rolled it out i think to 300 stores and right away it hit and it was doing so well, they just put it into all stores, which was great, it was so exciting. It was so successful beyond our expectations that other merchant groups wanted to become involved with Lauren. We weren't just doing clothes, we were doing shoes, and we were doing sunglasses and jewelry, and then we started doing homes, so we're doing bedspreads and throw pillows, and now we're doing baths, so it's like towels and shower curtains. It's so cool. I mean, I never thought I would have my name on a shower curtain. <laughs> it's just, it's neat. It turned out really good. I know it's not weird to say about my own stuff, but yeah, I'm very, I'm very, very happy with it. As time went on, she stopped being Lauren Conrad, the reality star from the hills. She became Lauren Conrad, the fashion designer. So the tops I did for Kohl's, and it's just like a really cute little chiffon top. It actually comes with a tie, so you can tie it at the waist. I have my dream job. <laughs> to be honest, I feel like I'm a little spoiled. I don't think I would change anything. I'd give myself a few more hours in the day, but that's it. I'm pretty lucky.
Once I had sort of established myself as a designer, I was like, okay, I don't have to just pick one thing. I'm going to do something else now and try that. Hi, it's Lauren Conrad, and I'm giving you an exclusive behind the scenes. Whoops. Hi, it's Lauren Conrad, and I'm giving you an exclusive first look at my crap. Hi, it's Lauren Conrad, and I'm giving you an exclusive behind the scenes look at my first ever book tour for LA Candy. I originally had talked to HarperCollins about writing sort of a funny dating book, and they said, no, thank you. <laughs> We've seen enough of your dating. They said, but if you ever want to write a tell-all, let us know. And I said, you know, I don't feel comfortable with that. And I believe it was actually Max that came up with the idea to sort of do a book inspired by my experience, what it's like to be on a reality show. She had a really unique opportunity to tell a story of a non-actor being plucked from obscurity and sort of thrust into the limelight. It wasn't a tell-all, it was a fiction novel. Obviously, Lauren knows that world intimately. I've lived that life, so I can write a book from that point of view without telling everybody's stories and outing people and upsetting people. We're headed to the book signings. The book was important because it was another dimension and another side. You don't want to ever be seen as sort of one-dimensional. She always had to prove that she wasn't just this dumb little girl from Southern California that was on a TV show. I'm here. Lauren, nice to meet you. She knew she had to work twice as hard to prove that she had some actual talent. Coming from a reality show, I'm, I'm a pretty easy target, and I'm the first one to make fun of myself, so I'm fine with it. But after a while, it's a little hard when you're like, this is something I really want to do, and people are still sort of doubting you. Lauren! 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 When Lauren called us and told us that her book had made the New York Times bestseller list, that was a little surreal. I mean, we knew she loved to write. We didn't know she was any good. Selling 1.5 million copies means that 1.5 million people into a store or buy a book. That is insane. I didn't think I was going to be on the top of the bestseller list. I wanted to make the list. That was my goal, was just to be on that list. So when it hit number one, that was, obviously I was ecstatic. After the success of L.A. Candy, it seemed a really natural progression that Lauren would continue to write successful books, which she did. She wrote another five books. And the fact that they've made bestseller lists really says a lot about her drive and her commitment. I've always been the type of person when someone tells me, you know, you can't do that. I'm so stubborn, I like being right about stuff, so it's, it's almost more motivation for me to do good. I want to prove people wrong. When you're with your best friend, it's almost like you're teenagers again, and we were like, who is letting us run a business? What's going on? thing about the fashion industry is it's just constantly changing. I get to do something new every single day when then at the very end you have this fantastic product and you get to wipe the slate clean and do it again, which I love. I can tell you a hundred things about myself just by the way I choose to style myself, which I think is really cool. Paper Crown, Lauren's third clothing line, is really her baby. This is her voice, her vision. Paper Crown, I started with one of my best friends, Maura McManus. Lauren and I first met in fifth grade. I had recently transferred from a different town and she just completely accepted me as a friend. And at that age, kids can be a little bit cruel. Lauren was never like that. She had worked in fashion for a while and we always had this thing we talked about, we'll do something really great together and it'll be so much fun because, you know, we'll get to work with our best friend. The conversation really started to heat up. She has a very successful line with Kohl's. There was just a lack of immediate control over what she wanted to be designed. And that's kind of where Paper Crown's been born. It has her fingerprints all over it. She's involved in every step of the business. This is so Lauren, really romantic. It's this place I can go and I can do whatever I want. And it's pretty cool. We started from nothing. There was no floor in here. There was no desks. There was nobody to work with us. So every step was a big step. When you're with your best friend, it's almost like you're teenagers again. And we were like, who is letting us run a business? What's going on? 
I remember when I first saw the collection, I took a beat. It looked nothing like what she'd done before. It was really unexpected. It was a totally different take on fashion. Paper Crown is truly Lauren on a hanger. She picks every zipper, she picks every fabric, she sketches every design. Lauren's business motto would be to put a bow on everything. The pieces are really beautiful dresses, party dresses. It's everything she would ever want to wear in the colors that she would want to wear it. One big difference is the price point. Everybody can afford to buy the, the clothes in the Kohl's line, and she's limited design-wise to what they can actually produce because of the cost. Paper Crown doesn't have those limitations. She can produce whatever she wants at whatever price point she wants. What I love about having both of these lines is that I kind of look at the way I shop. I shop for everyday clothes, and then every once in a while I go out because I have a wedding or, you know, I have a luncheon that I want a more specialty piece for. Is this paper crown that you're wearing now? Yes, this one is paper crown that we did. Stand up and then tell us how much. So, so cute. cute. Um, this is, I believe, $2.29 over at Anthropology. It's great. What I love about Paper Crown is that it really does reflect our lives and where we're at. Last year, we actually did a bunch of dresses that we could wear to weddings because we had so many weddings coming up. We were like, we don't have anything to wear. We should probably handle that. So the line has always been very closely connected to our lives. I think it's really important to stay connected to the people that support you. They're the reason you're able to do what you're doing. We have a couple spare hours before the signing, so I'm here with Alex, and we are working on posts for the website. Hey, what's up? <laughs> LaurenConrad.com is much more a lifestyle site as opposed to a celebrity site. What's really cool is that it's constantly changing, and it's kind of a little mini community. This website encompasses everything from fitness to fashion to decor to beauty to cooking and recipes. It has something for everyone, but all with Lauren's flair. Sort of this site where I can talk about all the things that I love. Why spend a ton of money on jewelry when you can make your own at home? I'm gonna show you how to make a really inexpensive bib necklace with items you already have. People aren't coming to the website just to know Lauren's personal juicy gossip. People look to Lauren as this influencer and this tastemaker. It really is just that young woman who's looking to make her life a little better and a little sweeter and is coming to the site, you know, just to feel inspired. I don't know where she gets her information, but when she comes over, she just knows everything about everything. <laughs> It's really cool because all the girls that work on the site, we all sit down together and we're like, what's going on this month? What are we all talking about? What's this weird new trend that people are doing or this diet? Or have you guys been trying this new spin class? It's just, it's all kind of things going on in our life and things that we care about and we want to read about. We're always getting feedback and I think that interaction with fans on this site is one of the things that makes it so cool. I will participate in an exclusive live stream event on my website where you guys can all tune in and ask me questions. Everything is completely genuine with her. You go over to a dinner party at Lauren's house and she really has made her own flower arrangements and, you know, cooked her famous enchiladas and can also, you know, give you advice on whatever problem you're dealing with at the time and knows how to do the perfect cat eye. And I think that the vision for the website really comes from that. We call Lauren Little Martha Stewart just because during the holidays she comes up with the most creative dishes. She spends the day prepping, baking, decorating, that everything looks perfect. I'm doing all the things I want to be doing. My definition of success is being able to live the life you want while doing something you love. I think if you can live comfortably and have a job that you look forward to every day, or at least most days, I think you are successful. People generally don't want charity. They want the opportunity to help themselves, and that was what we were able to do with this. When you grow up somewhere like Laguna and you're spending all your time outside and on a beach, you're very aware of your environment and taking care of it. I was given a platform and I wanted to shout something from it. That's how you're raised. If you can do something good for someone else, you should. Any other new projects you have coming up? I have a line actually just came out called Exo Eco that's um, all bags made from reclaimed plastic. So it's, you know, like uh, shopping, travel, beauty, all that kind of stuff.
We were first introduced to Lauren through a mutual colleague who knew she was interested in possibly starting a line of reusable bags. I was immediately impressed by them because it's a company run by three very, very smart, strong women, and they just want to make the world better. Blue Avocado's mission is to provide thoughtful designs and creative solutions for living a greener, simpler life. I kind of took a look at my lifestyle and thought, okay, what are things I use every day that I could be using a recycled product for? What is something I can have that would reduce waste? Everything in this collection is made with Reprieve, which is a fabric that's made from recycled plastic bottles. And in every product, there's an impact label that tells you exactly how many plastic bottles were upcycled to make that particular product. If you can do good and create commerce, it's a great marriage. So this is designed for the girl who's on the go. She's packing her lunch or traveling, and she needs things to carry her jewelry and her makeup. Girls that don't want to compromise, and they want to carry cute bags, but they also want to do what's right for the environment. Lauren's a really creative person, and she also has this really unique inquisitiveness and just strategic insight. My favorite product that we came out with in the first year was a curling iron holder. When I travel, the last thing I do is my hair really quickly before I go, and I'm always putting a hot iron into a suitcase and melting something. She represents her fan base and this millennial generation, and if we can invite them to make greener choices and be part of this solution, to us, that's my dream come true. It was an opportunity for me to use everything I had learned in design and do something good which was great. It was sort of a win-win. Lauren's done a great job at using her celebrity to sort of spotlight things that are important to her and that she thinks should be important to other people. She understands that we're lucky, and she also believes in helping people help themselves. To her, it's not about writing a check, because anyone can give money. I was in Africa with one of my good friends, Hannah. I actually went on this trip with her because I wanted to meet with a bunch of organizations out there. Because I was looking for something. I was at a point in my life where I just, I felt the need to do something. We met with a number of nonprofits that were focusing on women and children. And after each visit, we'd spend time in the car talking about what we had just seen and how moved we were by the people we met. We fell in love with the women artisans because they were so passionate about what they were doing and they wanted to preserve the culture and their skills while finding a way to support their families. It was so amazing and very eye-opening. You wanted to help them all and that was where we came up with the concept for the little market. We knew that their items are so beautiful that if they reached the U.S. market, people would pay them what they deserve for their products. But at that time, there wasn't a great way for them to get their products to the U.S. or customers outside of their community. So we wanted to come up with a sustainable way to help these women by creating an online marketplace where their goods could be available. It's a very innovative notion, using the Internet as the platform to sell those goods so that more of the profits from those goods can go back to the women who made them. Lauren and I have been humbled by the women we've met. Many of these women work incredibly hard despite hardships and are completely dedicated to the work they're doing. So we're moved to work as hard as we can on their behalf. One of the things we were noticing is that people generally don't want charity. They want the opportunity to help themselves. And that was what we were able to do with this. It was, here's a talent or a trade you already have. We just would like to give you a place to sell it. They travel a lot to not the most fun places to go to. It really has helped form her character to get outside of the little bubble that we live in here and, and what the rest of the world is really about. And it makes you want to try and help them, and she can. I always just look forward to the future because I don't really know what it's bringing, and that's kind of exciting to me. Beautiful one. <laughs>
Despite being a reality star for almost a decade now, Lauren has still managed to kind of maintain a great level of respect both for herself and for her fans. She's friendly, she's relatable, she is very real. Just the fact that people connected to her so intimately, that's why they listen to her about cupcakes as much as they listen to her about eye makeup. And that is exactly why she was able to become such a huge brand. You're like a major like fashion, you know, Trying. player right now. Trying. <laughs> Laguna Beach and the Hills put her at the center of pop culture, but then she parlayed it into a much bigger pop influence than anyone expected. Lauren's impact on pop culture is huge, it's endless. People listen to her, and I think that she inspires a lot of people to do good, too. She's gone from a high school student to an author to a designer, and now, having just been recently married, she has a whole new world open to her. I think that the nicest thing about marriage is just stability. You're saying, this is my favorite person, so I'm gonna make them part of my family. And you become a team, you know? They make you better, and they're there to encourage you. And I think if you're able to find that in somebody, you're so lucky. I know it's important to her to start a family. We're excited about that. I think her businesses will continue to flourish, and really the sky's the limit of what she might achieve. I definitely see Lauren in 10 years living in Laguna Beach, in a mansion, overlooking the ocean with her husband, and lots of cute babies running around, and she'll have five cell phones running her empire with five hands in different businesses. She's really laid the groundwork for what it is to be a successful woman. Who's our inspiration today? She's feminine, but strong. Nobody was doing what she was doing 10 years ago. She has trailblazed a new path to creating your own identity, making your own rules. The way she's embracing her success and really using her voice in such an authentic way and pursuing the projects that are meaningful to her is just really amazing. People want to know Lauren's next move. I don't know that she understands how powerful she is, but people really look to her as a role model. Beautiful Lauren. I can remember early on in high school joking with her because her grades were kind of average, saying, well, you might have to end up marrying a rich guy. And she just laughed and said, I'm going to make my own money, and I'm not going to marry somebody for money. And I was really proud of her, because I think that every girl should have that attitude, you know? They're, every girl out there can make their dream come true. It was cool to see that once you find a dream, you can really achieve something. I think if I were to have a life philosophy, it's just do what makes you happy and try and do good. Try your best not to worry too much about what other people think, because you're never going to impress everybody. <laughs>